Hello, Kim. Thank you so much for joining me on the World Vegan Travel Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I am so excited to have you <laughs> joining me because we have been featuring quite a few people with vegan businesses, vegan hotels, and so many of them are from Germany and <laughs> yeah, we have funny. another one today. This is so exciting, the growth of the vegan hotel in Germany. And we're going to talk all about your hotel, where it is and what it's like and what people will experience when they go there. But before we get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah, my name is Kim. As you said, I live in East Germany, actually, close to Berlin. And I am the co-founder of Germany's largest vegan hotel. It's two of us, Jonas and me. We are the founders and we also run the hotel on a daily basis. So until you got this hotel, what were you doing? Were you in the hospitality industry before that? Yes, I've been doing it all my adult life, I should say, not all my life. After school, I did a management trainee program in Germany for three years. I worked at a Marriott Hotel in Hamburg. And in Germany, we have a dual system. So you go to school and work at the hotel at the same time. So it's three years of constantly working and learning. So at the end, you've seen all departments of the hotel, you worked in all the departments and you learned the theory in school. So you're well prepared for your life. After that, I transferred with Marriott to Phoenix in the US, where I did a two-year food and beverage training program. And then I went to the Cayman Islands and later to Dubai, where I worked at Bush Al Arab, the famous hotel that looks like a sail. <laughs> it's very famous. It was only 10 years there when I joined, so it was very exciting. Then I went to Abu Dhabi, Qatar. I went back to Germany. Then I moved to Vancouver to actually study holistic nutrition, which was one year where I didn't work in a hotel in all my life. Then I went back to Germany, where I met my co-founder and now business partner, Jonas, and we decided to start a vegan hotel together. So are you vegan? Yes, of course. Jonas and I are both vegan and we actually met in the hotel. We became friends because we were the only two vegans out of 100 employees. So the day I joined, he was already there. He checked me out on Facebook before and he came straight to me and said, so what do you eat? I said, I'm vegan. He's like, yeah, I'm vegan too. Actually, he knew it already, but that's how we became friends and decided to start the hotel. Fantastic. So I always love to hear people's origin stories about how these things come to pass. So how did you go from being a vegan Marriott employee to managing this? It's not a large hotel, not like the Burj Khalifa, for example, no. but it is still a rather large hotel considering that it's all vegan. So how did all of that come to pass? I just always loved hospitality. And then when I did my training, I realized that I really love food and beverage. I loved working with the kitchen. I loved serving food, speaking to people about food and beverages, of course, as well. Wines. It is hard to serve non-vegan food when you're vegan and to explain menu dishes to people. I worked at a steakhouse and I had to explain the items to guests and I've never tried them. Whenever we did tastings, I asked my colleagues, how does that taste? What is this? What does that mean? <laughs> they explained everything to me. But it felt weird when we worked at the hotel together, like Jonas and I. It just became more and more difficult for me. And he said, I've always had the dream to run a hotel. And now that I'm vegan, I want to run a vegan hotel. We found out we just complimented each other because I did all the food and beverage part and he did all the rooms department and front office part. So we said we just put our experience together and we start looking for a place. So we looked for a year and we found this place where we are now. So tell us about the hotel. Where is it located? It's in Brandenburg, the state in Germany that is northeast of Germany, right between Hamburg and Berlin. Those are the cities probably everybody knows. So we are in the countryside. The hotel, as you said, it's not very big. It has 39 rooms, but it's the largest fully vegan one in Germany. It's located in a five hectare garden. The garden is certified organic. It's a landmark, so it's protected. And the hotel is in an old castle, which stands in this garden. We have one restaurant. The restaurant serves lunch, dinner, and cakes. We have a huge winter garden with floor-to-ceiling windows where we serve breakfast. We can do family gatherings there, meetings, weddings. We have a lot of weddings, actually, vegan weddings. We also offer cooking classes. A lot of our guests ask for cooking classes, so we're starting that now. We have a sauna, we have a gym, we have yoga and meditation, all free of charge for our guests. We offer bicycles for rent. We offer canoes, stand-up paddle boards. You can go swimming here at a lake nearby. You can do a bicycle tour. You can just go walking. Dogs are welcome at the hotel. So you can bring your dog and enjoy nature with it. So tell me a little bit about the cuisine that people can experience at this hotel. Because 
If you're in the countryside, I'm sure there are not a lot of options around. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure people that stay at your hotel would love to eat there too. Tell us a little bit about what the breakfasts and lunches and dinners are like. So there are some restaurants around, but there are no vegan restaurants. Some have vegan options and some have more vegan options now because our guests go there and they keep asking. So a little cafes who said they will never do vegan cakes are actually doing vegan cakes now because our guests ask all the time. Our breakfast is a buffet. We have a tofu scramble, we have pancakes, waffles, beans, all kinds of things actually. And then we have sausages, we have cold cuts, we have cheese. So because we don't only have vegans staying with us, we also have other guests. So something for everyone. Of course, fruit and vegetable is a huge part for the breakfast, also healthy options. That's actually the highlight for most of our guests, vegans and non-vegans. A lot of them say at checkout, that was the highlight. Yeah, when you're a vegan and there's a really good breakfast buffet and you can eat all of it, it is something really quite exciting, I find, too. And what about lunches and dinners? Lunch and dinner are served at our restaurant. We have a nice terrace, a huge terrace, where you can overlook the garden. That's a la carte. You can choose whatever you like. We change the menu every four to six weeks to keep it really seasonal. A lot of places say we are regional, we are seasonal, but we actually really are. That's why we change the menu every four to six weeks. There's usually around six to seven starter options, six to seven main courses and three desserts. Most of it is from the area here, from local farmers. And then we have an organic supplier as well and something from the garden too. We have apples, pears fresh berries, walnuts from the garden, herbs as well. Yeah, that's about it. Wow, that sounds so delicious. And how are the desserts? That's always something that I'm always yes. really excited about. Some are just like a normal desserts, but made vegan, like tiramisu and cheesecake, chocolate oh. mousse, panna cotta. You sound like you're really describing the typical European hotel with the cold cuts and the cheese. It sounds so typical, but so, so lovely. The rooms, could you describe what they are like? The rooms, we have nine inside the actual castle where the restaurant is and the front office. And we have 30 rooms in a building right next to it. In the castle building, the rooms are more posh. They are overlooking the garden and in the side building, they are a bit more down to earth but still really nice. So we have a lot of double rooms. We have some single rooms. We have a suite. My children welcome at the hotel? Yes, of course. I love it. Okay. I'm not sure how the Germany star rating system is, but how would you describe the amount of comfort is in the hotel? Like is it two star, four star, five star? We have a four-star certification. The hotel is like a four-star hotel, but we are in the countryside. We are not about butlers or having people carry your luggage it's more about the atmosphere it's very familiar but you still have your comfort as i said we have a gym we have a sauna we offer massages and yoga we have the restaurant where you can eat seven days a week all times of day yeah it's a four-star hotel wonderful so for many of the people listening to this they are from north america and they would certainly go to maybe Berlin when they were traveling around Europe, maybe Hamburg as well. And we can talk about what's interesting about those places in a little while. But if they did want to come to your hotel, how do they get there? They can get there either by bicycle. We have a river, it's oh. called Elbe. It flows from Hamburg to Prague in Czech Republic. Theoretically, you can cycle from Hamburg there and just stop at our place. But it's 391 kilometers, so 100 92 miles, I think, which is quite a lot. So realistically, you would take the train. If you're on vacation, you most probably don't have a car. Cars, of course, an option, but otherwise just by train. It's one hour from Hamburg and one hour from Berlin. Is the hotel located in the countryside or is it in a small village? Yes, in a small village, a very small village. I see. Great. Are there any other sort of attractions around this little village that people might like to check out? Yeah, the river, as I mentioned, very popular bicycle tours. We also rent bicycles. They are made of bamboo, so they are sustainable bicycles. People like to do that. They like to go just walking and enjoy being out of the city. Most of our guests come from big cities and they enjoy the peace and quiet. The lake is nearby where you can swim, these kind of things. Otherwise, I would just recommend going to Berlin or Hamburg. Really? So you feel like you can use it as a base to explore those cities yeah, too? Definitely, definitely. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, let's talk about Berlin as a destination. I think most people listening to this podcast would know that Berlin is a very vegan-friendly destination. From Absolutely. what I know, there's so many restaurants and places. But before we talk about maybe your favorites, because I always love to get recommendations from our guests about their personal favorites, why would people want to go to Berlin? 
First of all, is the capital. The capital of a country is always interesting. The government sits there. You can visit all the government buildings. And then Germany has a really rich history. Germany was divided for some time. And also Berlin was divided. There was a wall right through Berlin. So just seeing that history, there are a lot of museums, a lot of history going on. So I would visit Berlin for the history. You can spend days just exploring that for the food, of course. Every vegan should go to Berlin for the food. Also the people. There's a lot of different cultures. Most people there speak English. There are actually some places where they only speak English now. So it's very multinational. Of course, the techno and electronic clubs. Berlin is famous for the party scene. Even Elon Musk, he loves to go to our techno clubs. <laughs> it's oh, famous, going right? His Tesla factory is close to Berlin, actually in our state here. So yeah, he loves Berlin. <laughs> oh, really? That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. And what are your favorite restaurant recommendations in Berlin? I really like Lucky League. The owner is a woman and she's really, really good. She makes her own cheese. She has a nice terrace to sit. And then there's Cops. Cops was one of the first vegan fine dining restaurants in Germany. The owner is really, really passionate about veganism. It's a great place to go. They have a nice bar with really, really great cocktails as well. Then Freya has really good food too. And it's Germany's first zero waste restaurant. They have their own recycling machine in the restaurant. You can see it even. It's really cool. Oh, wow. That is really, really amazing. Okay. And what about Hamburg? How far is it to get to Hamburg from your hotel, from a head hotel? One and a half hours by train and by car too. Yeah, so I've been to Berlin, but I've not been to Hamburg. What's so oh. interesting about that place? Oh, we definitely missed something. Hamburg is all about water. It has the river there. It has the Alster Lake in the city center. The Alster Lake is great. It has all these old buildings around. You can do shopping there. In winter, the lake freezes and you're surrounded by all these beautiful buildings and you can go uh, ice skating, which is cool. At the river, you can just walk and soak up the atmosphere. Then there is the Philharmonic Hall. It's new. It was built in 2017 and it cost 10 times the budget they originally planned. So <laughs> Germans make fun of it all the time. But it's beautiful. And you can go up to the platform to see the city from above for free. It's actually for free, which is great. Oh, wow. That's so lovely. What are your favorite restaurants in Hamburg? And there are any other really interesting places to check out? The Clouds. Clouds has a really nice view over Hamburg and the Empire Riverside Hotel has a great bar as well where you could go to. Yeah, Hamburg is not as vegan friendly as Berlin. There's a lot of restaurants with vegan options, but like real proper vegan restaurants, not that many. I see. Interesting. So what's special about your hotel? First, that we are Germany's largest vegan hotel, we are sustainable and we are climate positive. Climate neutral is a thing now, but climate positive is quite difficult to achieve. We have a company here, actually in Europe, which does the certification. It's the Project Gold Standard certificate that you can get and we got it. They measure the CO2 footprint in all areas of the hotel. So, of course, how you get your energy for electricity, for heating but also how your employees get to work, where you get the produce from, how much CO2 that admits, which I find really, really interesting. So they take everything into consideration. Then we plant trees to be climate neutral, but we plant more trees, not only somewhere overseas, but here in the area to become climate positive. But right now we are working on it because rather than compensating, we think the most important issue is to reduce the CO2 emissions in the first place. So the compensating should only be the bandage when you tried everything else. So we are now investing in sourcing energy from renewable places like doing solar energy. At the moment we are into that. Oh, wow. So you're going to maybe put some solar panels on the roof? Definitely. Oh, how was the process to get that certification? Um, my business partner, Jonas, does that actually. They ask you all kinds of questions in advance. You have to fill out, I think it was 30 pages of paperwork, where they really ask you how does your employee, one, come to work, two, and we have 30 employees. So we had to write that down by bicycle, by walk, by bus, by car, how many kilometers, how often after they went through all the paperwork and they came to see the place and to check if that's really true. They spoke to people, make sure that everything we said was true. And then they rank you accordingly. We got ranked as climate positive, which is great. Wow. And how much does the food that you serve in the hotel contribute to that? I'm yeah. curious to know whether that was significantly, yes. it was? Yes. We are a very old building. It's an old castle. It's centuries old. So energy is a problem. The heat doesn't stay as long as a new building. So we were really not lucky, but it was a good thing that we have vegan food. 
because if you consider that 37% of all global emissions comes from the food sector and 58 of those come from animal based foods, you win a lot by serving vegan food. Actually on our menu, we show the CO2 footprint of all our menu dishes and we compare it to 200 gram steak with side dishes, which emits roughly around 2 kg of CO2 and our dishes, they emit between 230 gram to 489 gram. So that's a lot less. And guests always look at it and even vegans who actually know it, they are surprised. It's amazing. So if you really show to people what impact just one meal can have, it's very surprising. Yeah. That is really interesting. So who are your clientele generally? Are they Germans or Europeans? And are they mostly vegan that come to your hotel? There are a lot of Germans, Swiss and Austrian people and then some Europeans. We had some Americans as well already, but mostly Europeans and then mostly the German speaking countries. We have a lot of vegans, but we have also flexitarians, vegetarians, pescatarians. We actually have everything, which is great because we like to inspire people. We want to show people that being responsible and taking care of animals and the environment can be fun. It doesn't have to be restrictive. That's why we are trying to make the food in a way that it appeals to everyone. So that everybody's happy with it and that people go home and say, you know what, being vegan is not that difficult. Maybe I could do it once a day, once a week. A lot of women are vegans, so they bring their partners, they bring their parents just to show them. Yeah, so that works well for us. We have also weddings where only the couple is vegan and at the end, the 50 other guests are convinced too and they are happy with it. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So as I speak to you right now, it is at the height of high season. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here because I know this time is crazy in Europe. But is this the best time of year to visit? It definitely is, in my opinion, because you can sit out on our terrace and overlook the garden while you eat. Everything is green and nature is just blooming. It's really, really beautiful. But then spring is nice. We have storks who fly here from Africa and have their babies here with us. Yeah, which is really nice. And I also like it when nature starts to bloom again. So spring is a nice time. And even autumn, because the weather has changed. So now until November, we have really still kind of summer weather. So you could be lucky and in October it's still really warm and nice. So that's a nice time to visit as well. Winter is okay as we have the sauna, the gym and massages and yoga. So you can pass your time here. You can even go for a bicycle ride. The German winters are not that hard anymore, especially in this area. But if I could choose, I would choose summer. I see. Are there any really interesting festivals around that people might like to time their visit for? There is, for example, Airbeat, which is 45 minutes away. It's just a music festival. We have some music festivals here in the area. Yeah, which is surprising. Wow, that's so cool. So how many years have you had the hotel now? Has it been operating as a vegan hotel? Only two. We actually oh, opened it in the middle of yes. Corona. Yeah, of COVID. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's so brave of you. My well, goodness. Yeah. It was the summer where Germans were allowed to travel again, but nobody wanted to leave the country. So it was a really good summer for us. I see. What are your dreams for the hotel? Where would you like to be in like five years or 10 years time? At the same place where we are now, actually, because now after two years, our employees are at a good level. We are very happy with them. They are happy with us. That's a good place. We have a lot of regular guests to come back. So, of course, we would like to have them come back also in five years. We would like to have new guests, of course. We are planning a second hotel as well. That is amazing. Well, I really hope you come back on the podcast when that (laughs) is about to open so that you can come and tell our listeners all about that too. All right. So if people wanted to find out more about the hotel, of course, see some pictures. Listeners, you can definitely go on the show notes and see some pictures of the hotel as well. But of course, going to the hotel website will be the best place to go. So tell us a little bit about how people can see pictures and learn even more about you. Keep in touch with all of your updates. Then what is the process for booking a stay? Best would be to go directly to our website. The best prices are on the website. The prices are dynamic, just like at an airline. So it depends on the season, depends how short in advance. We have a lot of pictures on the website. You can switch to English as well. We have a lot about what we do and to keep the hotel sustainable. You can see also our menus there in English. So it's very interesting. You can book your yoga classes, book your bicycles. Everything can be done on the website. So I would really go there. Do you have some sort of half board or full board option as well? And no, we don't. All our room prices include breakfast and the other meals you can just do as you like. I see. All right. Okay. Of people, like, we don't have lunch because breakfast is so good and so filling. <laughs> so <laughs> then they have dinner. 
I love it. Thank you, Kim, so much for taking the time to be on the podcast. I cannot wait to visit your beautiful hotel. Yes, yeah. Listeners, really make sure you go and have a look at this really rather unique hotel. I just can't believe that something like this exists. I'm so pleased. Thank you again for taking the time to be on the podcast at such a busy time. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I was really happy to speak to you.